Good afternoon. My name is Richard Delbello, and I'm the Vice President of Global Engagement of Virgin Galactic. It's a pleasure to join you today at the Next Rise Conference, and I'm only sorry that I was not able to join in person. But I would like to take a few moments today and tell you about the exciting activities that we've been doing at Virgin Galactic and how we have been pioneering the new space frontier. For the last 10 years, Virgin Galactic has been working diligently to develop its spaceflight system. And now after a lot of hard work and an extraordinary amount of testing, we're, we have gone to space three times with our existing spaceship. We hope to complete the flight test program this year and assuming the successful completion of that flight test program, we would initiate commercial service next year. The Virgin system is composed of two unique vehicles. The larger of the vehicles in this image uh, is our carrier vehicle, and we refer to it as the mothership. It's a high altitude, high performance jet aircraft capable of very heavy lift. The spaceship, which is the vehicle in the center, is designed to safely carry humans and experiments to space and back. Here's an interesting image of the mothership flying. Um, I believe this is uh, the, cat, the mountains in California below. Uh, this unique vehicle can fly to about 55,000 feet. It's capable of carrying payloads up to 13,000 kilograms. And it's an all, I think the largest all composite aircraft in operation right now. <clears throat> this is an image of Spaceship Imagine. Spaceship Imagine is our newest spaceship. And it demonstrates not only Virgin's commitment to compelling design and design that meets the needs of people, but it actually is the vehicle which is a pathfinder for our efforts to develop production and manufacturing technologies, which will allow for the rapid increase of our total fleet size so that we can meet the significant demand that exists globally for space travel and for access to space for important experiments. This image uh, shows the shop floor in our Mojave, California facility. <clears throat> Virgin Galactic is a vertically integrated aerospace company. We do our own engineering, our own design, uh, and our own manufacturing. Uh, once these vehicles uh, reach a certain stage of completion, then they're transferred to our operational base. Um, this image shows Spaceport America, which is a unique uh, facility which uh, Virgin Galactic and the state of New Mexico collaborated on. Uh, it is a uh, brand new, beautiful facility, and we look forward to initiating it to commercial service next year. <clears throat> I'd like to show you a video of our last space flight. Before I do that, uh, let me describe the, uh, the process uh, of our space flight system. So the carrier aircraft and the spaceship are mated together on takeoff. The airplane takes off on a regular runway. It climbs slowly to altitude. Usually this takes about 45 or 50 minutes. Um, and when it reaches somewhere between 45 and 50,000 feet, the carrier aircraft drops the spaceship. The spaceship then ignites its hybrid rocket motor. The hybrid motor is a combination of <clears throat> a, a gas and a solid fuel. 
And we, we, we decided to go with a hybrid motor because it offered us a new, a different level of safety uh, over then existing uh, liquid rocket motors. The vehicle once ignited burns, uh, it climbs pretty much vertically. Uh, the engine will burn for about 60 seconds when the engine burns out. <clears throat> The spaceship continues to climb in altitude until it reaches its apogee somewhere over 80 kilometers to 100 kilometers. <clears throat> At that point, uh, the vehicle comes down and when it re-encounters the uh, atmosphere, it turns into a glider and then it glides back to the original launch site. Let me now play the video for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. As for me, I never get tired uh, of those amazing views uh, from space. So when Virgin set out to build this unique spaceflight system, our assumption was that our goal would be to take individuals, space tourists, if you will, to space, people who just wanted to experience the grandeur of the vision from space. Uh, since that time, we have uh, discovered that there is a substantial, there are other substantial sources of demand for suborbital space flight. Uh, one of the most obvious is the opportunity to train new astronauts in realistic zero gravity situations. Um, this is a unique image of uh, our second flight to space. And you see our pilots. Uh, and then floating above the pilots is our chief astronaut trainer, Beth Moses. Um, she went along on that flight to test out the interior of the spacecraft and to get prepared for our commercial customers 
for training our commercial customers. In addition to human spaceflight, <clears throat> we've also been investigating the demand for suborbital research in space. Virgin was, of course, designed to carry people, up to six people and two pilots. But we've also discovered that there's a demand for, if we remove the seats and install instead, payload racks so that scientists and researchers can test different um, experiments in space. There's a significant demand for the rack space by itself, but also for blended missions where humans and their experiments would fly together. <clears throat> um, this is a artist's rendering of what uh, a, the cabin might look like on a research mission. The goal would be to provide the researchers three to four minutes of high quality microgravity and to be able to provide frequent and low cost access to space. And most importantly, quick recovery of payloads. The space station is of course an amazing research tool, but it is very expensive to get experiments to the space station. And then it takes a very long time to get your results back in many cases. But we can offer uh, the return of the payloads and the information almost in the same day as the flight. So it opens up an entirely new um, uh, opportunity for researchers. <clears throat> Here's just a few of our university researchers. Uh, we have, on all of our test missions, uh, NASA has flown, has funded uh, the flight of um, experiments at, through a broad range of activities, um, biomedicine, fluid dynamics, combustion science, many, many other disciplines. So um, NASA has a specific program called the Flight Opportunities Program where they fund researchers who then come to uh, us for um, access to one of our flights. And we think that this uh, is a tremendous new area uh, going forward and we look forward to working internationally with partners around the world to both fly their astronauts and also fly experiments from, from uh, universities and governments around the world. So to sum up, <clears throat> um, Virgin Galactic has developed a unique and a very flexible spaceflight system. The original objective of the system was to be able to democratize space to make space more available to all. Um, this original goal of spaceflight tourism has now been augmented by new markets, microgravity research, um, astronaut training. And so and in addition, we think there's a large educational component uh, of all of this activity. So we at Virgin are also committed to working with the next generation uh, of spacefarers uh, as they are young and early in their careers. And we are supporting various STEM programs. And, and we think that this new tool of suborbital spaceflight will provide hands-on training to the next generation of the world's scientists and engineers. <clears throat> Going forward, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we intend to increase the production of uh, the motherships and also the space uh, spaceships. Uh, the goal is to have a fleet in operation uh, at our facility in uh, New Mexico. Uh, we wish to expand our activities in microgravity research, professional astronaut training, and in reaching out to students uh, in universities and secondary schools who might be interested in using this amazing new platform. It's our goal to be providing hundreds of suborbital, suborbital flights a year from Spaceport America, and eventually to see new spaceports around the world.
thank you very much. I enjoyed the opportunity to talk to you today, and I hope we get a chance to meet in person sometime.